know what to do. Maggie. Hello. How are the kids? For sale. <laughs> Where is he? Daryl, go wake up your Uncle Dan. No, no, it's all right, Maggie. I got it. I'll do it, Daryl. Rug rat of yours back in the house. All right, that's it. Maggie, that kid of yours is dead meat. Lloyd, Roger and Daniel Jefferson, I'd like you to meet your new partner, Deputy Eduardo Garcia. Two days out of uniform, and he's all yours. My friends call me Eddie, sir. Are you having fun? And which sandcastle did you build? No, um, I built I did that one. Did you help? Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. If you want to see the architects of tomorrow, swim, surf, run down to the 19th annual Santa Monica Sandcastle Jamboree, where young and old alike vie for first prize. This is Sharon Maxwell for Channel 3, Eye on Us. LA 2311, yeah, 10 4, thanks. You drive. LA Medical Examiner, respond to a 1055 at Beverly Regency Hotel. 1055. 
dead body. What? Uh, come on, we can be there in three minutes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fred says we don't do hard news, remember? You coming or not? What about this, uh... Forget it. How's my dog? Hi. He's fallen in love with my mom, so I don't even think of getting him back. No, I'm sure Jasper has a real home now. My regards to Donna. I never touched her. Are you getting this? Afraid so. Come on, let's get these people out of here. Come on, move, move back. Back up. Come on, Sharon, now. Do it now. Mike, keep these people out of here. Yes, sir. Kid, get us a good diagram of this. J. Marie Malat, 2215 Franklin Terrace, Hollywood. Correct address? Take it in. What a life, huh, Doc? Jesus, in my 18 years, I've never seen a slice-up job like that. No, no, she, she wasn't sliced, she was dissected. Hmm. All right, thanks, Mike. Our pal knew precisely what he wanted to do. Precisely? What do you mean? This isn't just a murder, kid. This is a work of art. Give me the key. I want to check out who that room was registered to. Most likely to be a dead end. Then uh, use some of that Latin charm you got on the maid. See what she's got to say. We get back to the office. We do a rundown on all murders over the last 15 years. All murders? Make sure you cross-reference this guy's M.O. Uh, excuse me, Sergeant Jefferson, can you tell us something about the murder? Wasn't me. Thanks, appreciate it. Next time that cocksucker calls, let me know. thinks your murder piece was terrific, but Terry's going to do the story. Listen, Fred, I know I can do it. 30 no. seconds, Sharon. Fred, I was there. Just, just give me the chance. Terry's the star of the show. Lead with the murder piece. 15 seconds, people. And in five, four, three. I'm Terry Moss, and this is KLA New News. The oasis of calm in Beverly Hills was shattered this morning when the stashed or slashed body of a Hollywood woman, Janie Marie Malott, 23, was found at the Beverly Regent Regency Hotel early this morning. What is she doing to my story? She, she can't even read it right. Later, Sharon. Later, oh, Fred. Wait. Brain surgeon, I saw what was Alvin done to that Smith woman. Was sentenced today to spend one month living in his own rat-infested apartment building. On a lighter note, bringing us up to date on the latest KLA Eye on Us Minute is our own Sharon Maxwell. Looking for something special, something different. 
Well, I've got just the place for you. The Santa Monica Sandcastle Expo. There's sun, there's fun, there's... On a lighter note... Jeez. The, the story what just, just doesn't seem important right now. A young what woman lost her life this morning. She was savagely murdered in a hotel room. Doesn't anybody care? Who was she? And who could have done such a thing to her? On a lighter note? Damn it, she deserves more than 30 seconds on the noonday news. Have we all become so callous and detached that we can just dismiss her like that? We are to blame. We trivialize what's Commercial important now. and promote what's not, and it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, we all better uh, wake up and do something Kyle. about it. We can make a difference. At American Airlines, we do this over 2,000 times a day. And we do it in over 200 cities throughout the U.S., Mexico, Europe, Canada, Hawaii, Caribbean, and Japan. And you thought we were just going to do What did you do? Tomorrow, 7.30 a.m., my office. You are out. Finished. All right. Thank you. Yes, we're moving into media in a very big way. And I want you to be a part of it. Yes, all right. Now, the papers will be drawn up and delivered to you by tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, my friend. Yeah, and the, the next time I'm in New York, let's have dinner. Ciao. Buy him out. I want that television station by close of market June. Yes, sir. Alan, Mr. Osborne. Three o'clock, the executive conference. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Dan, do you mind me asking what happened with Miss Maxwell back there? Well, listen, you were right. Room 313 at the Beverly Regency was registered to a Mr. Smith, and he paid in cash and by mail ahead of time. So can I get you anything, Dan? Maybe some coffee? Some coffee? Yeah, sure, kid. Cream sugar? Yeah. All right. Let's see what we have here. We got a big joint, Beverly Regency. We got Janie, who, according to a rap sheet, rented out at 500 an hour, and we got some seriously weird Indian graffiti. Well, I, I think it's South American, Dan. Yeah? I don't know. Anyway, my little voice tells me this guy is not just about doing call girls. All right, kid. We start with a check of the hotel staff, then we move on to that South American angle, see what happens. Here's your coffee, Dan. What? Your coffee. Never touch a stuff. Hello, babies. Dan Jefferson, L.A. Sheriff. Don't move. No doubt heard to your manager that there's one sick son of a bitch out there. So if any of the boys start taking it into some real serious bents, just give me a call here. Give me one of those numbers. Day or night. You mean you're not going to bless me? Yeah. Good, huh? Sharon, Sharon, are you ready for this? After you left yesterday, the switchboard lit up like a Christmas tree. Over a thousand calls came in, all backing you. Morning, Sharon. Listen, uh, it's a little too hasty in my estimation. So, I'm not fired? Sharon, don't be silly. Think of the ratings. 
Hey, wasn't that Dan? I'll never speak to him as long as I live, Jefferson, that I just saw on the head of the tape? Yeah. You did well, Sharon Maxwell. Keep up the good work. Nice, Fred. Oh, uh, yeah. One last time, Ira. Cowboy. Oh, shit. All right. Say hello to your mother for me, Ira. Bye. West Hollywood, kid. Who's that, Dan? My snitch. If I wasn't so lazy, I'd go kill a son of a bitch. Well, they got back to me with that computer check on all murders going back 15 years with the same M.O. You and got zip. Yeah. How'd you know? This guy's an original. Who lives here? Janie's love broker. And look at you. You got copper in all over your face. You loosen up a little bit. Uh, starting tomorrow. Get yourself some real clothes. Hi, guys. I'll take that as an invite. How old are you, sweetie? Fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen. Now you're 18. Hi, guy. Who the oh. fuck are you? I'm her father. Nah, I'm only kidding. I'm a cop. And you, sweetie, are under arrest. Ah! Oh. The goddamn gun. Go get it. I got a much better idea. Dave, I got a fish for you. You just get me the hell out of here, man. You just get me out. Well, oh, we got a cowboy. It must be Christmas. Huh? Cancel your ticket right there on the spot. You all right, Dan? Yeah. What's the charge, Dan? Contempt of cop. Let me out of here before you kiss your mama, boy. Twice. Put them where you want them, Dave. Be creative. All right. Take your legs out. I don't know what happened. He just barged into the house in the middle of the party next time. We were shooting at him, crying out loud. Make the call, get me out, do what I tell you to, you get paid for it, you understand?
Yeah, you got the 20 grand. Get the same again. Just have her meet me at uh, Gibbons. One hour into the bar. Hey, Slick, the lady's with us, and you're leaving. Hey, buddy, my buddy's talking to you, asshole. Hey, hey, anybody home? <laughs> <laughs> Take your eye with one of these things. You all right, Lewis? This is a great car. <laughs> Well, thanks for getting those creeps off my back. So, is this a big party? Monster. <laughs> Great. party? Looks like it's just you and me, doesn't it? Wait here. Story of my life. I am the hunter. I drink the blood of the fallen and gain strength. The sacrifice is mine, for I am strong. The sacrifice is mine, for I am immortal. The sacrifice is mine, for I am Nagook. Why is it always the weirdos who have money? Uh, 
Homicide, Deputy Garcia. Um, yeah, Sergeant Jefferson, please. Yeah, hold on. Sarge? Jefferson. Hi, Dan, it's Melanie. Trump. Hi, well, you told me to call if anything strange happened. Anyway, I'm at this place downtown, and there's this weird guy. He's got all these objects around. <laughs> Melanie! Tracy. Melanie, speak to me. They only got the prefix, Dan, somewhere downtown. Well, hi there. Did you have a good sleep? You feeling all right? Who were you uh, talking to on the telephone there before? That's all right. You don't have to tell me. I already know. His name is uh, Dan Jefferson. <laughs> now then, let's get down to business, shall we? I don't know what you're talking Beneath your pillow is a knife. It is yours. If you make it out of the building, you live. Why are you doing this to me? Off to work we go, Melanie. have given me this knife. I know how to use it. There's $10,000. It's only a game, Melanie. Part of the ritual. A game? Yes. And you are its most honored participant. Sergeant Jefferson, can you tell us anything Jesus, about the murder? Give me a break, will you? Doc, get your work done as quick as you can. I don't want these vultures getting what they came for. Sure. Well, well, guess who's here? Yeah, I noticed. Another cutie? I know her. Sorry. Guess it's your day. How's that? They're cowboy chum. Must have had one hell of a Christmas club. Just made bail about an hour ago. 
marvelous. What kind of animal could do that? Is my call to Johannesburg ready? Yet? Here, sir. I'll put it through right now. A very dangerous animal, I should think. Well, there's been a second murder. Apparently by the same killer. And from all your calls and letters, I know you want to get involved. And I need your help. There you the go. The victim's name is Melanie Van Dorn. Hey, turn that up. Los Angeles. A young woman, 23 years of age. And like Jane Marie Mellot, also a call. Watch girl. this. We need to hear from anybody who knew her or possibly last saw her. I don't need this the shit. The only clue we have is some type of primitive symbol found etched in blood near both victims' bodies. The only evidence the Sheriff's Department would make available to us was no comment at this time. All right, we know that there is some evidence the Sheriff's Department should not reveal to the public, and we respect that, but I am sure there is something, anything, that they could give us that would help us to help them apprehend this asshole. Did she say asshole? Uh, as long as she doesn't say fuck, would just turn himself but fine. Up, but until he does, I think maybe the Sheriff's Department should rethink their policies of how much evidence they withhold from their public. What do you think? Yeah. We'll be right back. Turn yourself in, buddy, just like that. How you doing, Harry? Hi. What do you got? Well, your victim died of a massive trauma to the left ventricle caused by this. It's South American, Indian. Yeah. Kid got there already. Hey, we don't know what tribe yet. The markings on this and the other arrow shaft match the symbols found uh, scrawled on the walls at the scene of the crime. And this was found at the base of that very same ventricle. See the eyes, nose, mouth? Yeah. Holy moly. Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland? Who's on the one dollar bill? George Washington. You bet. And who's on the thousand dollar bill? Grover Cleveland? No shit, kid. You ought to run for governor. You know how tough it is to get a thousand dollar bill? Ninety-nine percent of the banks haven't got one. Our boy has big money. Big money. Sharon, there's a call for you. Thanks, Shirley. Sharon Maxwell. You know, you're amazing, Sharon. Thank you, I think. Is there something I can do for you? You know, I'm just thinking that in life as in business, uh, only the strong survive. Um, I beg your pardon? Is there something you need? Nothing. Just a thought. <laughs> I guess I'm your biggest fan. Thank you. Um... Look, I've got to go now. You betcha. No rest for the weary, huh? By the way, did, uh, did you get the roses? Yeah, Ira, that sounds very bad. Why don't you gargle with aloe vera juice? Yeah. Works for me. Uh, let's get back to this, Ira. Look, considering what I got on you, I know you don't like that tone of voice. 
You know who I'm looking for? Yes, not with a suit. Fowler. That's right. That's the guy I'm looking for. Give me a location. Right. Okay. Thanks. Say hello to your mother, Ira. You coming, kid? You bet. Sorry, gentlemen. The line falls outside. Both sides. Me too. Hey, yo, you can't go back there. I don't want your sex, and I don't need your kiss, but I would like to know just who you are. No pressure here. Relax now, my dear. We're not gonna go. I know you. Oh, fuck you. This looks very good. Terror, send it back. Excuse me, this is a private party. So it is. Come with me. Give. Watch our pal back there. You're wasting your time. I know people downtown, you understand? So come on, what is it exactly that you do want? Confession would be nice. What? Fowler, let me tell you where I'm coming from. Basically, I'm a lazy son of a bitch. Consequently, I got this snitch. He tells me everything I need to know. He tells me you knew Melanie Van Dorn. I never heard of the girl. Good night. You crazy son of a bitch! Melanie? All right, maybe I met her at a party once. And? She had nice legs. Now, will you please let go? This is a little embarrassing. Where? I don't know. Now, will you please let go of me? I know you know something, you worthless piece of shit. One of these days, you're gonna trip over your own dick. And I'm gonna be there. I'm his tailor. I'm giving him a fitting. Have the ammo, kid. again, won't you? Of course. Of course. Your service forwarded this call to you, Mr. Fowler. They said it was quite urgent. Thank you. Yes. Hey there, old buddy. It's me. Club Z in 30 minutes, huh? It's gonna be the last time. Things are getting sticky around here. That's too bad. I'll require a double. <laughs> Is that so? Deal? Okay. Step it down. Do you mind uh, breaking away for me for a little while? Sure. Anything to get me out of this party. Is that him? No.
saved my life getting me out of that party. Forget it. No, really. My good dear, I owe you. <laughs> Get ready for a night you'll never forget. So, Dan, what is it? I mean, you caught that Hollywood joker with no sweat now, are you telling me you got nothing? I'm getting a little pressure, you know? Where's the old magic? Magic? Yeah. There ain't no magic, Lloyd, and you know it. There's good hard cop work. Eddie and I are out there busting our chops. Yeah, 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 yeah. Meanwhile, the mayor wants magic. I want it stopped. Time's up. Fred. This is your lucky day, kiddo. After what happened yesterday, you are going on live at 6 and 11. You'll answer calls from the great masses, and you'll respond to each of them. Ta-da. Are you kidding? I got a door. And an office. Maxwell's office. I found another one. Lady, I am going to make you into a household name. This guy's pissing me off. Danny, no arrow. Dan, I did some uh, checking on this symbol, and uh, well, all of this, it's from some, some primitive tribe. It's the domination of women, the return of the hunter. It's a ritual of the blood. All of that, huh? This is some weird shit, kid. Security. Intruder in Mr. Osborne's office. Hurry up. Call security back. Uh, tell them to forget it. I'll take care of it. But Mr. Osborne just barged in. Renee. Thank you. Hey, 
you have been a naughty, naughty boy, Mr. Osborne. Now, I admit that I am a criminal, a deviant, and I do love to party. Now, that's a fact. But compared to you, mister, I don't hold a candle compared to you, mister. Can I uh, offer you anything? I don't believe I know your name. Well, uh, let's keep it that way. I'm a businessman. You're a businessman. And I got the deal of the century for you. You give me, say, uh, 500 large, and I get amnesia. You get we ever met. That's uh, both times we had the pleasure. <laughs> now, it, you do realize, of course, that if I were to call security right now and say uh, that you threatened my life, that they'd, um, well, they'd probably shoot you on the spot. Oh, Lordy. You know, you are breaking my heart. Now, let's not make a career of this. Do we have a deal, or does my buddy make a phone call to the boys? <laughs> buddy? Man? Well, of course I have, man. Hope you don't, you big old. Now, we have a deal, or what? Be very careful of what you ask for in this life, my friend. You might just get it. Mr. Roth, I'm sending out a gentleman with a cash receipt for $500,000. I'd like you to have it ready for him in 10 minutes, please. Yes. Thank you. Done. Yeah. You have a nice day. Cheers. And I'm sure killing these helpless young women makes you feel potent and all-powerful. Well, I want you to know what your public really thinks of you. I have a few letters here addressed to the murderer of Jane Marie Mellot, Melanie Van Doren, and oh. Stephanie Jameson, whoever you are. This broad has got to some To the balls. serial killer. I hope I serve on your jury. I want to watch you fry. Why waste time and money on a trial for this animal? Let's just hang them and be done with it. And one more. Dan, you really know how to pick them. I would like to get to you before the cops do. I've cut off your... I'm sure you get the gist of it. Who's running the store down there? Don't they know there she's baiting are. the son of a bitch? I hope I've made your day. This is Sharon Maxwell. Thank you, and good day. Somebody better deal with it. Sergeant Jefferson, I told you, it's out of the question. Thanks, Ian. Look, we've got a new owner. And as a matter of fact, his organization likes a frank journalism. They want me to encourage it. Encourage it? Why don't you give this guy his own show, let him do his killing on television? That way your ratings go right through the roof. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, all I know is A, the Constitution, B, the First Amendment, C, freedom of the press. Anything else you can keep. People are dead. You're going to dance around with that noise? I want to talk to Sharon Max, so I want to clue her in. All right, let me elaborate further for clarity. A, she's protected by that same First Amendment. B, I'm the guy that signs her paychecks. And C, she's not here. So if that's it, uh, just give me a break, huh? I got a very important meeting. Come on, kid. Let's see how just isn't here she really is. Hi. 
What a surprise. Yeah. Sharon, we have to talk. Oh, you want to talk? Well, that's a new approach. The things you're saying on television are way out of line. Trust me, Sharon. We have wait a minute. Deal wait, wait, wait a minute, Dan. Getting... What, what makes you think you can walk in here and tell me how to do my work? Look, Sharon, I'm No, here... no, Dan, you look. You're missing the point. As usual, missing what really matters. You have to understand my point. No, Dan, I... if it weren't for people like me, people who actually believe that there is some good left in us, Sharon, in all of us. I want you to meet the new owner. Lucky me, I found her. Hey, Sharon, I'd like you to meet uh, Spaulding Osborne, Sharon Maxwell. How do you do? This is a great pleasure for me. I've always admired your work. I find it most stimulating. Well, thank you. Sergeant Jefferson. How do you do? Howdy. Yeah. Well, would you care to see the studio? Certainly. Stop it. Attitude adjustment. Come on, give it a rest. Dan, please, what are you doing? You're under arrest. For what? Lack of common sense. Move over. No. Move over. Follow us, kid. <laughs> Do you realize that? I'm not going in there. Wanna bet? You've got to be kidding. Dan, why are you doing this to me? I'm not going in there. Jesus. Reality? I'm going to show you some reality. This! This is what it's all about. Get me out of here. <sighs> Please. Wait, wait, wait. Dan, time out. Hmm? Hello, young lady. Um, we uh, watch you all the time. <laughs> You're big around here. What do you got? Well, um, hair samples on all three of our victims tell us that uh, your pal is... White male between the ages of 35 and 50. And on one of the victims, uh, Tony Van Dorn, he found some paint. It's uh, bases from a flower indigenous to just a few places in South America. <laughs> it's my guess that uh, she, he was probably into that pagan stuff. And he probably likes heavy metal. Nice job. Thanks. I'm real sorry that I dragged you there. You are baiting this guy on television. You gotta stop. He's not gonna stop killing. The last thing you want is to get on his bad side. I'm just doing my job. I'm a journalist. Besides, I'm protected by the First Amendment. What amendment protected them? Show a girl a good time. I try. Are you hungry? Yeah. Thanks. Still trying to save the world, I see. Uh, Dan, I think he's called me. What? And I think he sent me roses after each murder. And where are these roses now? You threw them away. You threw them away? 
Jesus Christ, Sharon. Would you stop being a cop for one minute and listen to me? Dan, I think he's followed me and I'm really scared. I don't doubt it. I wish I could tell you not to worry, but this guy's not gonna stop. Oh, that's a big weight off my shoulders. Yeah. Listen. I'm gonna get this guy. And I'm gonna stop. But you, Sharon, have got to work with me. In the meantime, I'm going to have a car camped out in front of your house. You won't even notice it. All right? You know where I'm living now? 6048 Formosa. Crosses Willoughby. I got to keep up on those things. I'm freezing. You want to get out of here? Yeah. Let's go. You liked it. I did. That's right. Spurs at Jingle Jangle, Lloyd. Gotta be cowboy. Get some units over there right away. Yeah. Hang on, baby. Oh, we're gonna have a good time tonight, baby. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. oh. Bravo. Outside your cage is a single action laser sighted crossbow. It's yours. These are car keys. It's parked out behind the lion cages. What's the catch? Oh, I imagine getting there alive. I have one shot, you have one shot. You pull him a chain, right? Interesting, isn't it? In the jungle, as in the business world, it always comes down to this. Two men, two weapons. One comes out alive. I'll count to 50. 
One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Yeah. Six, Come on, I, I. Seven. I forget about everything. Eight. I, nine. Ten. I didn't give you back the money. Your turn, cocksucker. Uh. Woo! I gotcha! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Woo! seconds in the jungle. Oh, come on, please. Just give me another chance. Another chance? Please? Oh, all right. Quick, name the seven dwarves. Uh, uh, sleepy, dark, um, uh, uh, sneezy, um, uh, Snoopy, Snoopy. Snoopy? DMV says the vehicle's registered to our pal Fowler over there. And the French fry in the car is? Francis Mulvihill, also known as Cowboy. Outstanding. Our vacation starts 5 p.m. on Friday, and I want to leave town with a clean slate. You're telling me the guy in the car is our man, huh? You bet, Lloyd. 10-4. We got our man. Peace out. Liar. Worth the shot. Dan, Lieutenant Hughes. What do you got, kid? I think it'd be better if you came over here, sir. How's 
foreign ink. What do you got? We got a lead, Lloyd. We got a solid gold $2,500 lead. So much for my vacation. Bag that. Did you check both their badges and identification? All right. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm Mr. Osborne's executive assistant, Emily Allison. How may I help you, gentlemen? Smile would be nice. I'm Sergeant Jefferson. This is Deputy Garcia. We'd like to ask you a few questions. I'm sorry, Mr. Osborne. They just. It's all right. I'm Spalding Osborne. We've met. That's right, the television station. Make yourselves comfortable. We're conducting a murder investigation, Mr. Osborne. I wonder whether you could tell me where that came from. From me? This is mine. Where did you find this? Nice collection you've got here. Thank you. That was found next to the remains of a charbroiled pimp. Amazing. I mean, it's, it's simply amazing where things turn up these days. Now, the last time I saw that lighter was two weeks ago, Friday, the Metropolitan Opera intermission. I went to light a cigar. Gone. Thank you, Renee. Tell Donald I'll be right there. Evidence. Thanks for your time, Mr. Osborne. We'll be in touch about your property. Good day, gentlemen. Let me ask you something, Dan. You have any idea who Spalding Osborne is? Yeah. No, no. Let me tell you. I kiss the commissioner's ass, the commissioner kisses the mayor's ass, the mayor kisses the asses of the Osbournes of the world. Are you following my drift? Sounds like an awful lot of brown nosing to me, Lord. Don't wisecrack me. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't have you on animal detail. Because he did it. Right. Start with the fact that the guy spent his wonder years in the South American jungle. <laughs> what are you cracking for? A psycho discharge? Are you claiming that one of the most powerful bankers in this country is a mass murderer? They're all bloodsuckers, Lloyd. This guy happens to be the real thing. Get lost! Come on in. I did a records check on Osborne like you asked, sir, and uh, he's clean. Oh, no, wait, then, then I did some more checking on my own. I, what? I kind of got this girlfriend works down at FBI Records, and... Osborne's a financial genius. He's made some big deals, reaped some big profits. Uh, no record of any military service, but, but he's an expert in martial arts. And get this, now, now he, he spent a great deal of time in South America last year doing big game stuff. Good. Yeah. Add that to the fact that article you're looking at reads like a Tarzan novel. You got one strange son of a bitch. Dealing with a guy like Osborne, you gotta pay attention to the simple little facts, you know, like hard evidence. This is awfully thin. Come on, why don't you go home, get a rest, get a grip. What, 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 what are you still doing here? Don't you have some paperwork you can be doing, huh? There comes a time when the public safety outweighs the public's need to know. I believe we've reached that. Therefore, I shall no longer be commenting on the murders of those unfortunate women. We intend to fully cooperate with the authorities and turn over any and all information that may aid in their investigation. What? This is Sharon Maxwell. Thank you. Look, uh, unofficially, I'm not saying 
Dad is right, and I'm not saying he's wrong. But unofficially, maybe you ought to keep your mind open to all possibilities. Do you get my unofficial drift, Deputy? Yes, sir. Very good. Hello? Hi, Sharon. Who is this? <laughs> it's your friend. Who else would it be? What do you want? Well, I was uh, kind of hoping maybe we could get together sometime. You know, we tend to think alike. You're a reporter. It could be part of your job. Keep talking. I was uh, thinking maybe we could do it right, you know. Bottle of Dom Perignon, a little balloon of caviar after that, who knows, huh? <laughs> who do you think you are? Where the hell do you come off doing these horror shows on women who never did anything to you? It's not very nice, Sharon. What, Mommy didn't give you enough attention? <sighs> wow. You're really disappointing me, Sharon. <laughs> Get used to it. Homicide, Deputy Garcia. Uh, this is Sharon Maxwell. I need to speak to with uh, Sergeant Jefferson. Uh, Sergeant left just a few moments ago. Um, I'm in my car, and I'm going home. I need to speak to him. The, um, killer just called me. All right, hang on. I, I can get him over the radio. LA 2311. LA 2311, come in, Dan. LA 2311, come in, Dan. Miss Maxwell, I can't reach him. Uh, okay, um, um, you reside at 6048 North Formosa? Uh, yes, I, but... Okay, I, hang on, the, the Sarge told me he's got, he's got a, a, a patrol car parked right down the street. Hang on. Officers down, 6,000 block Formosa. Officers down, send help. Jeez, send help.
Oh my God. Too fast. I, 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 Save your breath, kid. I'm gonna get him. I swear to God, I'm gonna make him pay for this. Oh, he, he's got to get back to share. He said, you gotta come alone or she'll die. Where? We gotta go. Wait. I. Where? Come on, kid. Corner. The, the spring. Lex. 12 midnight. Alone. Or he'll kill her. Thanks, kid. Yeah. yeah. Don't call me, kid. My name's Eddie. Eddie Garcia. All right, Eddie. Get him there, guys. Good luck, kid. Why are you doing this? Why, for God's sakes, you've got all that... Money, all that power? I do not belong to the small world of power and money. My domain exists beyond all of this. Beyond all that you think of as life. Can I tell you something personal? Eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Osborne, you're there. Corner of J and Harrison, warehouse district. On foot and alone. If Sharon even has a headache on account of you, I'm gonna tear your fucking lungs out. I have another chance. You're late. No shit. Osborne, you there? Always. Now look behind you. Hang up the phone and head for the elevators.
Don't you write me a one way? Crazy. I know it's crazy, baby. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. I'm open to suggestions. Life and death are two aspects of the same thing, which is being. I was born, you don't have a fucking chance of walking away from this one. Come and get me. Gladly. First time I meet you, I Osborne! Sharon, move. Move out of the way, now. All right, Osborne, if you're gonna shoot, shoot. If you shoot, she dies. If you don't shoot, she still dies. Ask me if I care. Well, do you care? Makes no difference to me. Drop!
lived in the shadows of sacrifice. You are worthy of my spirit, my immortality. I am Nikoch! Well, I'm Dan, I'm a cop, and you're fucked. What do you think the chances are of getting Jasper back from your mother? Excellent. <laughs> 